hello again today as i promised i'll discuss uh, the subtraction uh, using addition in the bi in the binary system uh, or how do we subtract on computers uh, which is uh, computers do not know how to subtract so they do it through addition and using the complement of the numbers so remember in the last class we discussed the complements of the numbers so the, today i'll discuss i'll start with that and uh, i'll go to the uh, floating point numbers how do we represent floating point numbers uh, in computers uh, which is a standard format it's called IEEE format uh, that's what we will discuss and we will end up with the with the interesting example of the errors in computers so let's see uh, so we start with the rules of subtraction uh, of unsigned numbers uh, using R's complement method. So uh, first I'll give you an example with the tens complement and then we'll go to the uh, twos complement method. Uh, because uh, computers do it through twos complement method because computers only know the binary system. And since humans know decimal system much better than the binary system. So an example with tens complement uh, subtraction would be much more relevant to in order to understand this. So uh, suppose we have to subtract uh, a number n from a number m. So we want to calculate m minus n. What is the method of subtraction? So you take the r's complement of n, the number which has to be subtracted, take its r's complement, which may which is equivalent to basically r to the power n minus n, and then we add m to this number to the complement of n. So sum will be m plus r to the power n minus n this is uh, in in theory now there are a couple of rules uh, how to how do you decide how do you go further than that there are two rules based on uh, the relationship between m and n. rule one is if m is greater than or equal to n so if first number is uh, larger than the second number then you ignore the carry when you when you sum these uh, numbers m plus r to the power n minus n uh, you, you you sometimes you may have a carry uh, which is uh, which is carried over in the in the, at the uh, leftmost place at the most significant bit so you ignore this carry without taking the complement of the sum and that will be your result if m is less than n then whatever the result you get you take its r's complement again remember you took the r's complement of the number n but now for the result you take the r's complement again of the sum and place the negative sign in front of the sum so that will be your resultant uh, m minus n if m is less than n so the answer the resultant answer will be negative i'll take a couple of examples uh, with decimals first so let us say as a decimal unsigned numbers uh, you have to we have to perform this subtraction S uh, 72532 minus 13250 so we all know the answer but let us see how do we get this answer through the uh, addition of the r's complement so in this case m is greater than n so that is case one so we are not required to take complement of the sum and discard carry so first of all but we need to take the complement of n so the tens complement remember r's complement we are taking so in this case since the our the system is decimal so we take tens complement so the tens complement of 13250 is you divide subtract from 999 and 10,000 or 100,000 uh, 10 to the power 5 is 86,750 therefore m will be 72,532 tens complement of n is 86,750 the summation here is this uh, 1,59,282 and uh, you discard the carry this is the carry since we only have five digits here so we'll keep the five digits we discard the carry and we don't take any complement so the resultant is result is 59,282 so we discard the end carry uh, which is 10 to the power 5 and we uh, basically we are subtracting uh, 100,000 from there but uh, the thumb rule will be we just discard this carry whatever carry is there we just discard it and you will get the correct answer another example uh, for case 2 when m is less than n so basically you are supposed to get a negative number uh, let's reverse this uh, procedure 
and the subtraction 13,250 minus 72,532. Now this should produce minus 59,282, right? So using the procedure again with complements, the, now the M is 13,250. Tens complement of this number is 27,468. The sum is 40,718. So now for this one, you have to take the tens complement again of the sum. So tens complement of this will be 10 to the power 5 minus 40,718, which is 59282. And remember, you need to place negative sign in front of the number because we are dealing with case 2 where m is less than n. So your answer will be minus 59882, which is the correct answer. Right? So uh, we are clear with the decimal uh, procedure. Now we will see the same uh, thing. How do we do with the in the binary system. So uh, there is a ones complement method and the twos complement method. How do you subtract a smaller number from a larger number? If the ones complement method is again similar lines is as follows. Number one, determine the ones complement of the smaller number, right? As we did for the decimal. Second, add this to the larger number, again the same step. Remove the carry and add it to the result. The carry is called the end around carry. So we remove the carry and we add that to the result. Right? Uh, we remove from the left leftmost side, but whatever result we have got, we add it to that. Okay, so let's see the one the example. Let us say we are subtracting 1010 from 1111. Okay, this has a number in binary system, this is also a number in binary system. Directly you can check this number will should get we, we should get 0101 0, 1. Now, how do we get it through ones complement method? 1111 now ones complement of 1010 is just reversing the digits 0101 0, 1. you add them So adding that will be getting you will be getting 1 plus 10 1, 1 plus 0, 0 because there is a uh, one carry so again this will be 1 plus 1 and again one carry so this will be one plus one plus one one again one carry one plus one is zero and one carry now this is the result you this you take this end carry and add it to the result and then when you add it so you see you are carrying out only additions no subtraction here using the ones complement method so the resultant will be zero one zero one as simple as that so you get uh, the result um, the required result as we we can check from the direct subtraction so the subtraction steps again a uh, subtraction of a large number from a smaller one by the ones complement method again involve the following steps so this is now case two where larger number is being subtracted from a smaller number so first step again same step determine the ones complement of a larger number because that is the second number then you add that to the smaller number second step is same the answer is the ones complement of the result and is opposite in sign there is no carry so whatever answer you are getting by this that is the ones complement of the result so you need to take ones complement again right so that the like we did in the decimal system now for twos complement subtraction the following steps subtraction from a smaller number from a larger one which is case one is as follows same number determine same methodology determine the twos complement of the smaller number now because you are doing r's complement add this to the larger number omit the carry remove the carry because there will always be a carry in this case you just you don't have to do anything so it's much simpler than using the twos complement subtraction is much simpler than ones complement subtraction so that's why in computers most of the time twos complement method is used same thing, uh, same example I'm taking with the twos complement method now and see there is one step lesser here. You just take the twos complement of this number which is here 1010, twos complement will be 0110. Remember the trick? You start from here for the twos complement, go up to where is 1 and then reverse the digits. So it's uh, 0, 1 and then 10. So that's what it is 0, 1, 1 and 0. So now you just add them and you will get this result and you discard this carry. So the answer will be 0101. Very, very simple. So two's complement method is very, very straightforward. 
So the carry is discarded if you remember as I told you and the answer will be 0101. So two's complement method for case two will be something like that. You determine the two's complement of the larger number first. Then you add the two's complement to the smaller number and then there is no carry. The result is in two's complement form and is negative. So you need to take the two's complement again. So and, and then you put a before that. Now uh, just a comparison between ones and twos complements. We studied ones complements and twos complements, just comparing them for uh, this thing for the for the subtraction. Now ones complement is very easily obtained using just an inversion of digits, and twos complement has to be arrived at by first obtaining the ones complement and then adding one, or there's a trick also where you which you can use. One's complement requires two operations, where two's complement method just requires one operation. And one's complement is usually used in logical manipulations, and two's complement is the most used method and used more only for arithmetic applications. So whenever you have arithmetic application, you will always prefer two's complement method. Now a comparison of uh, uh, these uh, three methods of binary system, three, three, three representations. One is sign and magnitude, the one's complement method and two's complement method. See the positive numbers are all same for all the, in all the three uh, representative systems. In sign and magnitude also plus seven is zero, one, one, one. This is also zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. It's only the negative numbers which have a different uh, value. Otherwise, they are all same. For, for negative numbers, minus 0 is in sign and magnitude is 1, 0, 0, 0. So remember, first sign is the sign bit and the rest is the value. Whereas in 1's complement will be 1, first sign is sign bit of course. And these three will be uh, the value digits. So these value digits will be reversed. And there is no 2's complement exists for minus 0. For minus 8, there is an a, a advantage of 2's complement method that there is extra digit you can represent minus 8 1 0 0 0 0 which was minus 0 which was meaningless here that can be utilized here to represent minus 8 so you get one extra digit in twos complement method now we come to the floating point numbers which is the ultimately we need to come to the floating point number because those are the numbers which uh, ultimately uh, defines values for all uh, possible possibilities right so the floating point numbers uh, is basically we will be discussing a ieee 7554 standard it's a it's a, it's a standard method which is called ieee 754 and it's, it represents a binary representation of fractional numbers right? how how to do we deal with fractional numbers if you remember just to, to uh, revise what we did binary to decimal conversion we remember uh, 23.47 in decimal we it was written by that and this is called decimal point and similarly for binary number 10.01 in binary system is defined like that one uh, these numbers are one zero zero one okay and this is called the binary point and the value in the decimal system will be this 1 into 2, 0 into 1, 0 into half and 0 into 1 by 4 which is 2.25. So 10.10.01 in binary system is equivalent to 2.25 in decimal system. Decimal to binary very easy remember write the number as sum of powers of 2 by uh, say continuous division or repeated division and you will get uh, these numbers algorithm was repeatedly multiply the fraction by 2 until fraction becomes 0 for the uh, fractional part you just keep on multiplying and then you get uh, this thing and you collect these uh, numbers and you get the resultant number remember very very important thing you have to be very careful with this conversion thing what is to be careful the, remember the finite decimal digits are not equivalent to finite binary digits so there are some inbuilt errors in conversion from decimal to binary very simple example a very simple number 0 0.1 in decimal system you, you think it's a very very accurate thing you don't, don't but as soon as you write 0 0.1 in computers 
you are not getting the exact result why because it is uh, you keep on dividing uh, for getting the actual binary digit 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.8 1.6 1 1.2 remember you keep on uh, uh, multiplying this uh, 0.6 multiply by 2 uh, for uh, continuous multiplication and it never ends so 0 0.1 in binary decimal system is equivalent to 0 0.0001 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 and it keeps on going 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 up to infinity so it has infinitely repeating binary system more bits you have binary representation gets closer to 0 0.1 but never accurate it, uh, I'll give you a very interesting example of this uh, uh, towards the end of the number system maybe uh, today or maybe in the next, next uh, class if I get time today then otherwise first of all we go to scientific notation what is a scientific notation in decimal if you remember if a number like this can be written as minus 1.23 into 10 to the power 14 or a very small number can be written as 1.23 into 10 to the power minus 16 because there are 16 digits here so in scientific notation we always uh, write things in uh, terms of a number multiplied by a exponent right a 10 to the power something in binary system this exponent uh, uh, will be 2 to the power something uh, because these numbers are based in the two, 2 to the power system so 1 1 0 0 this has you can write uh, but it is very easy to write uh, see this has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so if I write 1.1, 0, 1, 1, and rest of them are 0, so I don't bother them because it's after the binary point. So I can write this number as 1.1011 into 10 to the power 14. Okay, or a very small number like this, I can write it like that. I can take the decimal point here, and it says minus 1.1101, 1 1.1101, sorry, this is the wrong thing. I think it should be 1011 into 2 to the power minus 16. So that is how you write this. But you always write a 1 point something. And remember binary system has only two, two digits either 1 or 0. So these digits will either be 0 or 1. Until they are 0, you will don't need to write anything. Uh, so, so you will just keep on counting the powers. So that will go into the exponent. But the first digit before the binary point will always be, what do you think it will be? Will it be a 0 or 1? It will always be 1. So in order to write these binary numbers in computers, you know that if, if you are writing this number and you, you can always skip this number because you know that this is always 1. So whatever number is written, you add a binary point to that and write a number 1 there, uh, which is uh, already understood. And you just have to store this number. This number is always be 1. This number is always in one you just have to store this number okay so let's now the coming to the floating point representation we need to have three pieces of information one is a sign what is the sign is it negative number or positive number another one is the exponent you need and you need the significant the actual number its sign and the exponent with the sign right so you need these three uh, pieces of information and the format to write the number will be first of all the sign will be written here sign bit which is only one bit all the all the time either zero or one remember one is for the minus sign and zero is for the positive number then you write an exponent see number is stored in this way in the memory first bit is a sign bit second bit is the or the uh, after the sign bit there are bits for exponent depending on what is the size depending on the size of the exponent you need to define the size and the rest of the digits are significant that's what the uh, the, the significant will be written there so there are fixed point specific size representations either 32 bit system or 64 bit system so we'll discuss both of these system in a 32 bit system how many bits are reserved for sign which is always one how many bits are reserved for exponent and how many bits are reserved for significant Similarly, we will uh, uh, discuss with the for the 64 bit also. So there is one sign bit, 
then there are more exponent bits if you have more exponent bits you will need you will have a greater range if you have more significant bits you will have a greater accuracy remember when we were representing 0 0.1 more number you have minor after the this binary point you will have more and more accuracy but if you have more exponent bits then you will have a larger range of possible for storage so what are the standards for ieee 754 floating point to represent floating point numbers in a 32-bit format, which is also called a single precision format, you need you you have one sign bit reserved for exponent. We use eight bits, and for rest of the 23 bits are reserved for the uh, actual number, which is the significant. Okay, so and and this number is always normalized. So, what is the meaning of normalize? You remove this uh, one, so it is one point something. So it is a normalized number because you are always removing one. Okay. So the number, if the number is F, this number is written F, this number is E in 8 bits, and this number is S. So how, what is the value of the number in decimal system? It will be minus 1 to the power S into 1 point F, 1 point, because remember always there will be 1 point F, this F, and into 2 to the power e e is this exponent minus 127 127 is called the bias for the 32 bit system okay it is called the bias and for the 64 bit system it will be 255 but for the 32 bit system or a single precision system it will be the bias is minus 127 and this exponent is not all zeros or all ones uh, all zeros and all ones have some special meaning which we'll discuss later but in this case the value of the number will be minus 1 to the power s s is either 0 or 1 so if it is minus 1 to the power 0 it is positive number minus 1 to the power 1 it is a negative number then you replace f here 1 point f and 2 e to e minus 127 the e is the value of this uh, number here so for example you have a number a positive number which is 1011101.101 which can be equivalent to written written as one point I, i'll take the point here so one two three four five so two to the power five one point zero one one zero one one zero one into two to the power five so five is written here this is uh, five and this is the number zero one one 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and rest of them all, all are 0. So to up to 23 digits, it will be all 0. And this number is replaced here as, and this is the number 5, the value 5, it is 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. Sorry, it will be 2 to the power minus 5, 1.000 into 2 to the power 5. Sorry. So this is 0, 1, 0, 0. That is Now the sign, if 1 is negative, 0 is for non-negative. Significant is a normalized number and there is always a left, one left of binary point except when I, e is either 0 or 255. So we do not waste a bit if you remember I told you that we do not waste this one bit uh, because this is a hidden one. And it is an unsigned exponent will be the unsigned interpretation minus the bias. So uh, in the earlier case, it will be 5 minus 127. So that is minus 122. So exponent there was minus 122. That is why the first digit was 1 because that is the minus and rest of the temple is the number. It is always minus because that is a, uh, it will, because you are uh, subtracting from 127. So it will always be a minus. Now, if you want to represent, let's say 0 0.75, so uh, 0 0.75 in decimal. So first of all, you convert that into binary system. 0 0.75 can be very accurately written as 0 0.11 in binary system, which is equivalent to 1.1 into 2 to the power minus 1. Now, 1.1 can be written as 1.f, so f is equal to 1. And e is minus 1 here, so e is minus 1, minus 127. So so e minus 127 is equal to minus 1. So what is the value of e? e will be 127 minus 1, which is 126. Uh, uh, in, the, in the last example, when e were, this exponent was 5, that was e to the power minus 127 was 5. 
So E would be uh, 5 plus 127, uh, which is uh, 132. So the value was 132 there. So uh, it is 127 minus 1, which is 126. And with 126 can be written as 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And S is 0 because it's a positive number. So the number will be written as 0. And this is the uh, exponent 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And then this is the number as the, uh, uh, the uh, significant, which is uh, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, because 1.1, you just have to write 1 and rest of them are 0. In the uh, hexadecimal system, it is it can be written as, uh, see, I, I group them into 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so this is uh, 5 zeros, then this is uh, 4, this is F, and this is 3. So the, the number will be written, you will find on computers, the number will be written as 0x, 0x means this is a hexadecimal number, and the value of the number is 3F400, so 0 0.75, will be written on a computer like 3F400000 in a 32-bit system, okay? Again, for example, 0 0.1, I am taking this example again and again because it will serve a special purpose uh, uh, there in the, uh, in the resultant example. So 0 0.1 is again 0 0.00011, which will repeat forever. And I uh, suppose I represent it as 1.10011 in the uh, binary digits in 2 to the power uh, minus 4, which is 1.f, 2 e to the power e to e minus 127. So f is 1011, which is a minus 4, uh, and minus 4 is equal to e minus 127. So e is 123. Uh, e is 123. So the number will be written like uh, this number. And this is equivalent, it's equivalent in hexadecimal system will be 0x, 3d, c, 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 d. See, the last digit is uh, uh, approximated with the, the next number, but it is not an accurate value of the 0 0.1. Now, the double precision standard for IEEE is for the 64 uh, bit system. And there, uh, the, uh, the, the methodology is still the same. But only thing is uh, the difference between the uh, place, uh, how many places are reserved for exponent and the significant. For exponent, you need uh, you have 11 places reserved or the 11 bits reserved, and uh, for significant you have 52 bits reserved. So you can have a larger accuracy as well as a larger range in the 64-bit system. And remember again, the E is not either zero, all zeros or all ones. They have a uh, uh, special uh, values there and normalized rule is again same only thing is the bias is different bias here is 1023 instead of 127 the bias is 1023 so and the other otherwise the formula remains same. so uh, now we discuss the special case numbers uh, rest of the uh, the rules remain same only thing is the numbers uh, the uh, number of bits are different in 64-bit system. Now, we, what are the hidden one that prevents representation of zero? See, zero cannot be represented in IEEE 75554 format uh, by the rules what we have discussed till now. Because if you put all zeros, then the computer will understand it's 1.000 something. So the hidden one prevents the representation of zero. Uh, uh, zero. So, what is the solution? You make exceptions to the rule. So, bit patterns we reserve for unusual numbers are when exponent is either all zeros or all ones. So, the rules, general rules are, uh, uh, are you, you make exceptions to those general rules. So, what are the special case numbers? How do we represent zeros? If the sign bit is zero, exponent is zero, and all the significant digits are zero, then this is plus zero. Minus zero is sine bit is one. This is all zeros, all zero. So if you see all zeros there, that means you are you are representing uh, zeros. How do we represent infinities? Remember, we did not rem remember we did not represent infinities yet. So if all exponent is all ones, and these are all zeros, then this is plus infinity. If exponent is all one, 
then this is one sine bit and all zeros then this is minus infinity so these are special case numbers okay if all ones it represents infinity plus or minus if all zeros it, it represents zero. So uh, now uh, for uh, smaller numbers, very small numbers which uh, do not have, uh, let's say, uh, which are uh, less than one or uh, zero point something, there, there is no hidden one. So we uh, the very very small numbers. How do we represent them? For that, you need to use the denormalized numbers, not the normalized ones. So forget about one point something. We need to represent zero point f. So that's what we need to represent. So E is all zeros, then different interpretation applies. Otherwise, the denormalization rule R, so the numbers which are very close to zero, they are represented through denormalized numbers. And the rules are, uh, again, minus one to the power S into now zero point F into two to the power, not minus 126. It's not E minus something. There is no E here because they are very, very small numbers. E is always uh, uh, missing there. So, and in the double precision, the 64-bit system, it's 1 minus 1 to the power s into 0 point f into 2 to the power minus 1022. And, and zeros also follow this rule. And uh, there, if, if e is all 1, then you say not a number. Uh, if f is not equal to all zeros, if e is all 1 and f is equal to 0, then this is infinities. But if E is all 1 and F is not equal to all zeros, if there is any one, any, way, any place there is a 1 here, then in the computer it is called a not a number, an an. Okay. So that is also a special case number. So now uh, you, we just uh, summarize this in a table, these are special values. For single precision, E is all zeros, F is all zeros, all 23 plus zeros, all 8 zeros. This is the meaning of this number is 0, either plus 0 or minus 0, depending on the sign bit. If E is all 0 and this is not, this is a non-zero number, like some number, then that is a valid number and which is uh, unnormalized. See, this is or the denormalized number. Okay, so this is a denormalized number, but which is very, very small number because E is all 0, but this is not 0. This is a valid number, but in an, in an unnormalized form or a denormalized form. The value of that uh, number will be minus 1 to the power s, 2 to the power minus 126 into 0 point f. So remember these things in uh, orange color. This is instead of 1 point f, we have 0 point f. And instead of e to the e minus 127, we have minus 126. If this is all one exponent and f is all zeros, then this is infinity. If it is all 1 and this is non-zero, then this is not a number. Similar thing will happen for this double position. Only thing is E will be have 11 bits and F will have 52 bits. The meanings will remain same. And there it will be 2 to the power minus 1022. Okay. So for the single bit, again, I'll uh, uh, now even uh, more uh, so in a, even a better table to understand. Uh, for a very small, most of the numbers are in this range, in the gray range, which are normalized number, which are, so they start with, exponent will start at least from this one, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and it will be minus 126, this is the real exponent in base 10, uh, and uh, f is some number, and the number will be represented in a normalized form as the formula given earlier. For very small numbers, when exponent is all zero, the real exponent is reserved, which has again special cases. If this is all zero, this is zero. If it is a non-zero number, then this is a denormalized number, which whose value is uh, this formula. If it is all one, then again there are two possibilities. This is either all zeros, which is infinity, or non-zero, which is not a number. So that is uh, the, this table basically summarizes. How do we use uh, IEEE 754 format? Now the range of numbers for a single bit, uh, single precision, in the normalized range, a positive range, the negative again will be the symmetric range. The smallest number which can be represented is 2 to the power minus 126. If it is less than that, you need to go to uh, the uh, denormalized number. 
the largest number which can be represented see the exponent could be all ones except this digit as one so this is the largest exponent which can be there and this is the largest significant so the value of this number will be plus 2 to the power 127 into 2 minus 2 to the power 2 minus uh, it's almost 2 to the power 128 but little less than that okay uh, and a smaller number very small numbers which are uh, when the all the exponent is zero this is the smallest number possible see uh, a one here that is the smallest number here okay uh, for the significant the value of this number will be 2 to the power minus 149 so that is the smallest number which can be represented in a single precision uh, format the largest number which can be represented is it will be written like that and its value will be uh, 2 to the power minus 126 1 minus 2 to the power uh, in the no normalized form that means it's a very small number but uh, this in this range uh, this range the blue range the red range is the normalized number the blue range is the denormalized number these numbers cannot be defined on a computer these numbers are positive underflow and these are if it is beyond that it is positive overflow if it is less than that it is positive underflow and these numbers there is a gap here which cannot be defined in a, a single precision system so those are the limits of IEEE representation even some integers cannot be represented in IEEE format uh, and uh, if uh, I don't know uh, I, I checked it once and uh, we said int x like that float y same number and we did a printf in a C++ uh, in, in C C language not uh, C++ this is a uh, printf for the C command and for this number it was uh, accurately represented but floating point number was not accurately represented I don't know why but there was some error so these are the limits of floating point representation and as I remember as I told you earlier some very simple decimal numbers cannot be represented exactly in binary like 0 0.1 I told you uh, a couple of times also in the same this this lecture already a couple of times and this is the number which keeps on repeating forever and I'll give you an example of that what happened if if you remember during the Gulf War in 1991 uh, you were not born at that time but you must have uh, heard about US and Iraq war uh, there was a US Patriot missile it uh, they, they, they US has uh, sh sh shot a Patriot missile on Iraq and it, and it failed to intercept the Iraqi Scud missile. Iraqis use Scud missile. They, they, they threw a missile on the US soldiers and then US Patriot missiles from this side, from the US side, they targeted this Iraqi Scud missile uh, but it could not intercept the Iraqi Scud missiles and 28 Americans were killed. Then inquiry was set up and what was the reason? So, so a study was done and it, it, it studied that this study uh, had resulted uh, uh, to find out this, the, the problem that it, that it was caused by the inaccuracy of the binary representation of 0 0.1. Why? Why 0 0.1? Why, why did it happen? Because the Patriot missile used in the US system, it incremented a counter in, the in their, its own chip, in the computer chip, once every 0 0.10 0 seconds. So it was uh, calculating something that the time traveled by the missile uh, after uh, every the, the clock runs every 0.1 seconds and it multiplied the counter value by 0 0.01 uh, 0 0.1 to compute the actual time. So it, it was thinking that it is uh, calculating this time every 0 0.1 second. But since it was working in a binary system, it was not doing it 0 0.1 second. It was a less accurate value. So the, they were using the 24-bit binary representation and it actually correspond to this value which is only uh, in error by 0 0.00000000953671431 this time. And you one would say this is a very small error. So it does not uh, look like this is a larger error. But when the, the, the missile was shot from US, it had to go to Iraq. So it took about 100 hours to do that. The time ends up being off by uh, 0.34 seconds. This missile was following this Iskar missile for 100 hours. And now the time was off by 0.34 seconds. So it could not 
make the accurate target on the SCUD missile, it was enough time for SCUD to travel about 500 meters uh, away from this. And uh, the 28 Americans were killed by that because US Patriot missiles could not intercept that SCUD missile because of the wrong representation of 0 0.1. And uh, there was a professor who wrote a, a research paper on that. And this is the reference for that. So you can go with this. And uh, similar thing, I do not know. Uh, recently, this uh, our uh, Chandrayaan uh, also uh, missed uh, its landing, the moon landing. And I was thinking, can it be because of this kind of a... Uh, I wrote a couple of letters to ISRO people, to a lot of people in fact, people have not replied, they just uh, they just didn't reply. So I don't know whether this kind of uh, similar thing could have happened to Indian Chandrayaan uh, which has resulted in a crash on the uh, moon, I uh, am not sure. Okay, so it's a thought, uh, keep on thinking and let's see. Uh, so that's uh, where I'll finish today. So that was an interesting example of uh, errors in the computer system. How a very small error uh, made in the binary system uh, can create havoc. It 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 costed uh, lives of uh, people of soldiers. And uh, who knows uh, what it has been doing in other cases also. This is one of the cases we know. Uh, so we do not know how the errors and compute. So we also uh, need to understand uh, this way that uh, computers do have limitations. Whatever humans can understand, computers do not have a way to represent almost everything. Remember there was a gap between 2 to the power minus 126 to 2 to the power minus 149. They, you cannot rep uh, represent those numbers at all. Those numbers are not at all representable in computers. And some of the numbers cannot be accurately represented, even if, uh, and you just saw uh, what, uh, and that was, a, that was a written example for that, but there can be many other unwritten examples. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, story. And uh, so we finish uh, number systems with that. So we, well, finish means uh, we begin here, but uh, in this course, whatever I am going to teach, that portion is finished. So we'll come back to now uh, usual computer programming and we will pick up from where we left uh, for the computer programming earlier. We discussed the two functions, so we'll pick up after that. Thank you.